powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us here on the Noon News. I'm Samantha Sullivan. The Montana Highway Patrol trooper who was shot several times last month in Evero is continuing his recovery in a Utah hospital. According to a press release just this morning, Trooper Wade Palmer is showing indications he recognizes certain people's people and things. However, all of his interactions remain nonverbal. Montana Department of Justice spokesman John Barnes says Palmer continues to interact with both hand gestures and facial expressions, but the extent of how much he understands is still unknown. Palmer is currently doing physical therapy on an almost daily basis to help strengthen his left arm and leg. Right now, only limited movement has been detected on his right side. Barnes also says that Palmer is scheduled to have his wiring and screws from his recent constructive jaw surgery removed sometime later this week. Trooper Palmer was shot in the neck, face and head after locating a suspect involved in a shooting that left two others injured and killed one in Missoula back on March 15th. Well, Congressman Greg Gianforte says he's seriously considering a run for governor in 2020. Gianforte joined MTN on Montana this morning in Missoula today, giving the first public indication that he may run. So it's a great honor to serve Montana. Uh, we, we love this state. We've raised our family here. Uh, on that particular question, I've been talking to people all over the state. I've been getting a lot of encouragement to run for governor. Uh, I have not made a final decision, but I'm, I'm seriously considering it. Of course, many within the political circle have speculated that Gianforte would run for governor. Meanwhile, multiple Democrats have put their name in the running for Montana's lone U.S. House seat, which Gianforte currently occupies. No Republicans have announced runs yet. Well, after four days of stalemate, the state Senate finally advances one of the biggest bills of the session. MTN's Mike Dennison has more on Monday's vote and debate over the continuation of Medicaid expansion. The day on the Senate floor opened with a dramatic 26 to 24 vote, breaking a four day deadlock and placing the Medicaid expansion bill on the debate calendar later in the day. That vote was crucial, enabling the bill to meet a transmittal deadline that otherwise might have killed it. More than four hours later, the same 26 vote majority held for debate stage approval, advancing House Bill 658 to a final Senate vote on Tuesday. Opponents, however, didn't go down without a fight, arguing the legislature was going against the will of Montana voters who last November defeated a ballot measure that proposed extending the program and funding it with higher tobacco taxes. I think they voted because it was a tax, because it's socialized medicine, because it incentivizes people to not work and to be in the poverty level so that they can get a benefit for remaining under the poverty line. The voters of Montana said no, and here we are, some of us thinking we know better. Democratic Senate leader John Sesso argued that voters said no to higher taxes, but not to Medicaid expansion. We have done what the people asked us to do and is not raise their taxes to pay for this program. This is the product that we put together, together, and I would ask for a due pass today because people are counting on us. 90% of the $700 million a year program is funded by the federal government. A new tax paid by Montana hospitals also will pick up most of the state's share of the costs. Senator Dan Solomon of Ronan, one of six Republicans to support the measure on Monday, said Montana accepts federal money to help pay for many programs and that HB 658 was an easy vote for him because of its economic benefits and aid to rural hospitals. What's the first thing people look for when they look for a place to live? They look for housing, etc. Then they look, where is it in relationship to schools and hospitals? So we lose our smaller hospitals that's going to make a big difference in how we look at things and how people look when they're looking for a place to live and a job. If the Senate approves Medicaid expansion on Tuesday, it goes back to the House for a final vote. And then it could go to Governor Bullock for his signature. Whether that path depends on the fate of other bills remains to be seen. At the Capitol, Mike Dennison, MTN News. 
Thanks, Mike. And meanwhile, the controversial bill that supporters say will extend the life of the Coal Strip 4 power plant passes a preliminary vote in the state house. This bill originally guaranteed Northwestern Energy could charge customers up to $75 million over the next 10 years for new expenditures at the Coal Strip plant. Supporters say it has been amended to address some of those main concerns, including giving the Montana Public Service Commission a greater say in approving the costs. Opponents said they expected the changes would be reversed first as the bill moved forward. The bill must pass a final vote in the House today. The Senate will then decide whether to accept the House's amendments. And the Montana House has endorsed a major reform to Montana's medical marijuana system. The biggest change in the bill is untethering patients from providers, meaning patients would no longer have to choose a single provider to purchase their marijuana. The bill originally raised a tax on medical marijuana providers from 2% to 4%, but the bill has been amended to make sure that increase is temporary. Supporters say the bill will give regulators the tools to better manage marijuana across the state. The bill must pass a final vote in the House today to have this bill move forward. Well, now turning things over to Ed in the Weather Center. Ed, I guess it shouldn't be surprising, but snow on the ground in some places this morning. That's right. Yeah, we're still in that season where we can get that, and so often we see it just before around Easter time. And today, it's Butte. Here's a look from there at 35 degrees. Still some light snow showers there, but starting to get warm enough, we'll see some of that change over to rain showers and start to ease back later. And then also in Helena right now, where you can see rain on the lens, but also some snow in the grassy areas. Some of the rest of the region around McDonald Pass, also some slick and snow covered roads or at least wet conditions there. Drier, but uh, with clouds around Great Falls and a few showers looking around the Butte or rather Missoula area. Rain showers in 43 right now. Take a closer look at the rest of the region in the forecast in a few minutes. Thanks, Ed. Well, the U.S. Department of Education investigators are in Montana this week looking into allegations of discrimination in the Wolf Point School District. The investigators will speak with students and parents about their experiences with the Wolf Point School District. A complaint filed back in 2017 states many Native American students left school entirely due to multi-layered discrimination. The Office of Civil Rights is expected to issue its final report later this summer or early in the fall. A man and woman could each go to prison after Gallatin County Sheriff's deputies say they were caught having sex in a local hot springs children's pool while kids were nearby. 33-year-old Don Klein appeared in court Monday morning. Her co-defendant, 37-year-old Aaron Miller, will be in court today. They're each charged with indecent exposure. The hot springs manager and four witnesses saw Klein and Miller, Miller having sexual intercourse about 10 feet from children in the pool on Friday before someone called the sheriff's office. Deputies say surveillance footage also caught them in the act. The couple was later pulled over and arrested. Well, new information surrounding a Big Fork athlete who's recovering after being struck in the chest with a javelin. Anders Epperly's mom posted this photo of the wound. It punctured his lung last Thursday during track practice. Her caption reads, quote, lung puncture closed, lung supporting itself, tube out, bandaged up, busting out soon. He was standing outside of the throwing zone when a gust of wind caused the javelin to go off course. Fortunately, it missed all of his major arteries. Well, coming up here on the new news, all eyes are on Notre Dame a day after a fire nearly destroyed the historic cathedral. We'll have more from the scene, but first, Ed will take a look at the full forecast. We'll be right back. Watching MTN News with Samantha Sullivan, Storm Tracker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Montana Ag Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.